Hello everyone, my name is Wally Farrow, I'm a tech entrepreneur and welcome to another episode of Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On Tech Roundup today, we'll look at the ongoing oil revolution in Nigeria as Nigeria's Minister of Communication orders telcos to reduce data rates. We will close the episode with the story that Google has partnered with banks in the US to offer personal banking services. Let's get started. This week, the OPE team in Nigeria announced a $120 million Series B round, making it the largest single investment round in the tech space in Nigeria. The round is led by, you guessed right, the Chinese investors. This is on the back of its Series A round of $50 million about five months ago, making it over $170 million raised in just over six months. If you don't live in Nigeria, you may not even have heard of the company. Even for me as an operator in the space, my first interaction with OP was earlier this year when we were trying to provide POS-related services to them as a payment terminal service provider. So what then is driving this growth and attracting expansion capital that is so aggressive and leaving everyone wondering what is at play here? I call it the whole revolution. The strategy is clear. Dip your hands into all verticals and provide a unique payment platform that is connected, that is not connected to the mainstream commercial banking. Simple, not really, but a brilliant idea if executed successfully. The company has created OPE, O-Ride, O Boss, O Cash, O Car, and the list goes on and on. It's attracting customers by providing cheap rates and promotional prices for transportation and most financial transactions like bank account transfer. It also announced recently that CBN has granted the firm a money transfer license that allows it to move money across border. The play is simple. Plug into the underbanked and unbanked and be the player that provides the most basic day-to-day -day, uh, for this segment. But the question is, will it work? My answer is not, to, not so clear at this point for the following reasons. One, with growth capital being poured into the space, we're not going to see the true impact of this strategy anytime soon. Cash will continue to be pumped to acquire customers at slightly higher than average cost. Losses will not matter and the impact of low adoption will not be relevant anytime soon. Two, multi-vertical strategy seldom works. What does OPA really stand for? How do you want to remain top of the customer's mind? I just think the apparent lack of vertical focus may, not be may need to be revisited in the long run. Even the biggest tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook are known for very specific services that they provide. Three, attracting customers with promotional offers does not guarantee repeat usage and loyalty. How many of these customers will continue to use the services after the promotion ends? And to our second story, the Nigerian Minister of Communications has directed the Nigerian Communications Commission, the NCC, to compel telco service providers to reduce the prices of data being offered to subscribers. The minister was said to be worried that Nigerians were paying so much for data without enjoying value for money spent. The minister also finds it unacceptable that with the prevailing high cost of data in Nigeria, the citizens still do not enjoy value for money as subscribers battle daily with illegal deduction of data, poor quality of service, among others. We look at data cost across a few markets to validate this claim, and this is what we found. One, Nigeria falls in, the, in what we call the data green zone, which means we're among countries where people pay for one gig of data for less than $10. The average cost in Nigeria is about $2.22. Many countries in Africa fall into this bank with Sudan, and DR Congo paying the least at 68 cents and 88 cents respect, respectively. Two, data heap priced at this level ends up to be more expensive in developed countries. For example, the US pays over $12 and UK close to $7. The difference is that the telcos in those markets offer bundle and limited packages which significantly reduce average data costs for a period of time. And finally, 
The quality of service seems like a big issue, and the difference between the developed market and the rest of the world. Uh, data usage ac accountability and quality and speed of data access is still a major drag in Nigeria and elsewhere. So even though the ministry is demanding downward price review and should be looked at, we think there should be more uh, there should be more of an immediate focus on increasing the quality of service and the telcos through NCC are urging the minister and the ministry to help address some challenges faced by operators in the telco industry. The challenges according to NCC are vandalism of infrastructure, inadequate power supply, disputes over right of way and multiple ta taxes. Maybe addressing these issues will help all stakeholders. And to our last story this week. This week, we're learning that Google is preparing to launch a personal checking account service, a move that comes as many other tech drivers are increasingly focused on consumer finance. The project is said to be in partnership with Citigroup and is expected to launch next year. Over the past year, Facebook has announced that it is working on a digital currency. Apple has introduced a credit card and Amazon has been in talk with banks to introduce personal accounts for consumers. While Google has, has enormous reach, about 1.4 billion people um, use Gmail regularly, so far each of these tech giants' financial offerings have run into problems. Several partners have pulled out of Facebook liberal cryptocurrency after regulators signaled opposition, while Apple's credit card partner Goodman Sachs has been sued for allegedly offering discriminatory credit limits. So it's not all smooth for, for these tech giants to enter into the financial space. However, we hear that Google is not planning to self-brand this offering of personal account service. A Google executive says the approach is going to be to partner deeply with banks and the financial system. And he admits that it may be the slightly longer route, but it's more sustainable. We'll continue to watch the space and how it develops. Please keep your comments and feedback coming on LinkedIn at Wale Farron. And remember, to subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Also, please look at the bottom of your screen for all our social media handles. Please follow, like, share, and join the ever dynamic tech conversation. Have a great weekend, guys, and see you all again next week. Call